know how to um, make a storyboard frame in Photoshop by taking a sketch of my storyboard, taking it into Photoshop, and basically cropping it, and then coloring it, and inking it, and shading it. So um, first off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click Create New over here, and I'm going to go Film and Video. And I want to set this to the aspect ratio of what my film is going to be. And I know my film is going to be HD, which is 1920 by 1080. So I'm going to select this and basically the default settings are exactly what I want. So I'm just going to click create. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to find my animatic or my storyboard rather. Uh, so I've got my storyboard here. I'm going to just plunk this open in Photoshop. And I'm going to work with layers to basically separate them out and create some guide layers and hopefully this is all stuff you've already covered, but this should all be just a quick little refresher. I'm going to go back to my pointer tool, command plus to zoom in. And let's say I'm going to start with, I don't like that frame there. So I'm going to just uh, select this frame. Command C to copy that. And I'm going to go back to my frame here. I'm going to command V to paste. And, oh, wow. Is that tiny? But that's okay. I'm going to Command T to transform, and I'm going to scale this up. And it doesn't matter if it's pixelated because I'm actually just going to use this to transform this. And actually, I know in the film it's the other way around. So I'm just transforming that and then flipping that. Oops. That's fine. I'm going to keep it like that. I'm happy like that. I'm going to frame it in my frame, and I'm going to hit Enter. And there it is. Okay. So now I'm going to use this layer to uh, be the one that I'm going to draw on top of. So what I'm going to do is I am going to go over here and I'm going to click this lock icon. Make that nice and big so it's easier to see you guys. Click the icon right there. Click that to lock that layer. Now I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to call this my lines layer. And hopefully you guys already have this bit done. And I'm going to go over here and I'm going to go to my paintbrush tool. But if I am going to just do painting in Photoshop, <coughs> excuse me, I, <coughs> oh, dry throat. I am going to go over here to the top and I'm going to switch my mode to painting. That just changes my layout. So I just have all my painting stuff like right there. And, uh, one of my favorite brushes, and everybody will, when you start using brushes and stuff, will figure out like what your favorites are. Um, and on a special effects brushes, there's a Kyle's HB brush that I just love when I'm doing this, but everybody has um, the Happy HB. Everybody will have like a favorite, um, a favorite brush eventually. It sounds like a weird thing to say, but you will. Uh, and basically you're just gonna start out by um, just drawing uh over your your drawing yeah so uh, also too if you want your lines to look nicer um like smooth up here at the top you've got the smoothing option boom turn that on and your lines will be smoother so um as i'm drawing my circle there oops that's a little bit too intense that smoothing we'll do 63 percent and i'm on the world's smallest drawing tablet right now so excuse me hopefully you guys I'll have something a little bit bigger at home. Basically, I'm just going to uh, draw out. Um, actually, I'm not too happy with this. Remember, hit Command Z if you don't like what you've done. I'm going to just change the flow. Also, too, I, I can change the angle, whether it's angling or brushes. This is all here at the very top. Um, and also, too, you could also turn on things like mirroring. So if I was to turn this one on and I did sort of vertical, if I drew a, a shape, I move this line over here and I was drawing a shape Hit enter if I draw the shape it draws it on both lines um, I usually don't have that turned on but that's that one so you know that <laughs> uh, but basically I'm just going to um, draw my shape of my character and I get really spoiled by using my tablet all day and using my drawing pad has become um, Something I'm not as used to as I used to be. And importantly, make this yours. This is your drawing, your storyboard. And we're just doing just the rough lines, yeah, of that drawing and um, making them my own. And I'll probably stop this recording and I'll just skip ahead to the shading bit. 
So I'm going to stop here because nobody wants to watch me draw. Uh, so I'll stop the recording. I'll skip ahead uh, and both parts uh, drawn. Sorry, like watching myself draw playback was like painful. So I just stopped the video and I drew it out. So you can see here I've got a layer that has um, background and my layer that has my line works. But my line work looks pretty cruddy without any shading or anything. It's just some funky lines. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add a layer between my lines layer and my background. I'm going to click a little plus over here. I'm going to click that and I'm going to go to shading. And I'm going to move this one under my lines layer. And I might turn the other layer off for a second because that gives me just sort of a sense. And this is a really quick way just to give a sense of depth and perspective to our otherwise cruddy drawings. And I do this really quick and I kind of hate it, but whatever. I want to get this tutorial done for you guys. <laughs> so I'm going to go back into my brushes here. And now I'm going to choose a different type of brush because obviously I don't want to probably shade in the same brush I was working. So in our general brushes here, we have all sorts of soft round brushes, like a pressure size one. This is quite good for just shading. And normally for just doing general shading, it's really nice to kind of work with a nice little round brush. And we can just work with the opacity on our brush as well. And to change our brush size, the bracket keys next to the letter P on your keyboard, the closed bracket that makes it tinier and the open bracket makes it larger. So what I could do is I could um, just quickly pick the size that I want it to be. And you'll see me changing the size of brush quite often. I, I think I normally just do that very quickly without thinking. Remember Command Z or Control Z if you're on a PC is undo. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the opacity. So if I'm shading, I might work with like a really low opacity. So I'm not going to work with black right away. I might work with like a gray. Uh, but if I was just paint with gray now, like that's quite intense. So normally what I do is I go back to like a 20% gray. To get to 20% opacity, our opacity for our brush is up here. See that? Or I could just hit the number 2 to jump to 20%. 10, 1 for 10, 2 for 20, 3 for 30, 4 for 40, 5 for 50, 6 for 60, 7 for 70, 8 for 80, 9 for 90, and 0 for 100%. So I'm going to jump down, back down to 20%. And I'm just going to start um, just doing a little bit of shading just to uh, give a sense for uh, my character, just to give a otherwise kind of boring drawing uh, a bit of feel. And basically, as I go over an area again, I'm going to change its mode from normal to, to darken. So as I go over the area, it will build up a bit of shade. Yeah? And if I want to do like a big area really quick, I might just make my brush nice and big and just do a big soft little brush there. Just so I'm not spending all day doing this because like I said, you've got 36 frames to make your storyboards. So you probably don't want to be spending all day doing this. And just by adding a bit of shading underneath this layer, it's going to make it look a little bit more interesting because we're working black and white right now. Don't worry, we'll get the color. Uh, it makes it a little bit easier. And you see, it's just sort of, because it's pressure sensitive, the, the, the harder or the softer I press down, and it's okay if you color outside the lines. We go, go to our eraser tool afterwards and then just uh, erase. So we make that nice and big and erase. And if you go over the area you don't want to do, Command Z, yeah? So we can just clean that up a little bit. I really am hating my Wacom tablet right now because there's like a spot right there, which is just absolutely rubbish. So um, Command plus to zoom in. Oh, if you're zoomed in, if you hold on the space bar, I give you a little handle there and that looked really rubbish when I deleted that there. We can see if I go over here, I can clean this up properly when I'm zoomed in. This helps to zoom in and zoom out. That is a good tip as well. So if you see the navigator over here too, this let, lets you know where you are on your screen. You can like navigate around and see where you're at. And then basically you just kind of have a bit of fun. Uh, and imagine B for brush, uh, what your, your shade, E for eraser by the way. Imagine where the, the direction of the sun is, what your characters are doing, um, adding a bit more detail to get sort of a sense for your character's mood and anxiety. Um, you could try different types of brushes, they'll have different feels. So I'm going to go over to this character here and I'll do 
a different brush just to sort of show you what that would look like if I did like I don't know like a chunky charcoal maybe I could shade with this and once again I'm just gonna drop that opacity because it's gonna go back to that 100% uh, again now I'll say darken and once again just make that a little bit smaller maybe I could shade with a textured brush and that's going to give it a very different feel and once again because it's at 20% if I go over an area and keep going over it it'll get darker and darker and darker this is as dark as it gets though if I want an area to go lighter I could flip the color around to a lighter color over here my color palette if I select this go lighter I would need to change this obviously to lighten and then I could go over the area and I could lighten up something if I wanted to as well. So you can do the opposite. E for eraser and you clean up the bit that's colored outside of the lines. And let's say I just want to spend a lot of time on this wing. You could even use brushes that look like feathers if that works. But we're going to just get slowly introduce you to doing this. But if you could just think about shading right now, um, you need to go back to my brush, I'll go back to my um, color. By the way, if you go to my swatches, it'll have my previous color up there. And uh, once again, I'm going to go to darken. It doesn't do that when it does that, but you know, close enough. Make it a little bit smaller, maybe. If I make it chunkier, you'll see it looks completely different feel-wise to the other one I was using. So you can choose whether you want like a chunkier or a softer brush, whatever works for your your style of your, your film. Uh, just brush selection alone can give it a nice um, quick feel. And particularly if you're new to Photoshop and you haven't messed around with brushes, those of you guys even on Procreate, by the way, um, Procreate brushes can be brought into Photoshop and Photoshop brushes can be brought into Procreate. You can um, get a nice sort of feel to this. So I'm just going to go back to this. I plugged in the eraser tool over here just really quick. Clean this up. So just by adding a little bit of shading, I've already fixed that scene a little bit. If I wanted to, I could add another layer here. And I can move this one behind that one as well. And I could go to the little gradient tool here and I can add a quick little gradient. So a gradient uh, starts off to follow back to white. I could do a little aerial gradient and I will do like that. Or if we do the opposite direction, it will do it the other way around. Um, I could do a little linear one where it sort of goes from top to bottom. If I want my characters to feel brighter, I might have to paint some white in. So if I flip my colors around to white, and I go back to my layer I was on for shading. I might want to paint the white back in. So go to my brush here, paint the white in. Sometimes I find it helps to like go to like a neutral color and then add uh, the highlights and the darker bits. Um, it's just a preference thing. But for me, like if I don't have like a, a neutral medium medium gray, I'll stay and I'll make everything really light and I'll avoid the darkness, but honestly, you need the brights and the darkness to give your image full range. Um, Command plus to zoom in, space bar to navigate up. I'm gonna just switch my opacity up to 100 by hitting the zero there, because I just wanna like paint the eyes in really quickly, because I want those to be nice and white. And I don't wanna be faffing around all day. By the way, if I hold down the uh, Alt key, this will um, pick up any color I want, so if I want like, that dark gray over there, I can pick that up really quick. And with a really chunky brush like this, you might need to make the brush smaller when you're doing the detail work, like between the eyes there. But now I can do that nice there, and I maybe I want to go even darker, double click, drag this nice and dark. Remember, we're working just with gray tones right now. Ooh, maybe that was too dark too quick. Uh, once again, dropping down to 20%. And if I just build this up a little bit gra more gradually, hopefully I'll like that a little bit better. You'll see how quickly I change the brush because I really don't want to be spending all day on this. And it's okay to color outside the lines. That's probably why you're an artist in the first place, because you probably did that. And your teachers gave you a hard time, but maybe you had a better vision. So, got my thing there, happy with that. 
I'm gonna alt click, pick up actual black and build that up a little bit more. Gonna go E for eraser and just clean that up like I was coloring inside the lines the whole time. And by the way, you can work on different elements on different layers, or if you wanna work on just a spot, like if I just wanna color in the beak here, I could use uh, this little um, selection tool here uh, underneath this one, nope. So I had to move the icons around. The magic wand tool, it, basically if I click that, it'll select the little area. But if I select it on the layer that is the one that has my lines on it, it'll select my line work. Um, but if I select it on my drawing layer, it sounds like a weird cheat, but it'll work. Um, turn my drawing layer back on, command D to deselect, and I turn off my gradient just for a tick. If I select like a darker area, it'll select that little bit for me. And if you actually made your lines like closed shapes, um, if I go to my line layer here, you see like this is a closed shape. If I click inside of that, it'll just select that, which is super helpful. If I turn this back off, uh, now that that area is just selected, if I go back to my brush tool and I paint, I can only paint what's selected, and that makes my life so much quicker because I can just paint within the lines there. So if you've actually got closed shapes, which I do not have for a lot of my things because I drew it too quick, um, but if you do have closed shapes, you can do that. Or underneath the lasso tool, there's a poly polygonal lasso tool, and you can use this like a pair of scissors. So if you click really quickly, you can make a little selection around the character's mouth like so. Blah, blah, blah. Click, 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 click as many times as you need to make the corner. It doesn't need to be perfect, but you notice I have to click. If I don't click, nothing happens. And I have to click to close. When I hover over the edge, it closes it. There's a little zero there. You see that if I click now, boom, that area is closed. If we go back to my brush tool, nice and big chunky brush. Boom, 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 boom. Just click, 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 click. Nice and dark. And deselect, command or control D to deselect. And that bit's all nice and done. Yeah, so that's a nice way of doing something really quick uh, there. And I can do the same over here once again, going that polygonal lasso tool. Ooh, and I was naughty, I was on my lines layer. I'm gonna lock that layer so I don't accidentally draw on that anymore. Go back to my shading layer. And I'm just going to select this bit here. I'm just clicking once again. I'm clicking where I want the thing to go. If you mess up, just hold the backspace key and that will like release it. And I can start all over again. And I can click around. Click, click, click. And it doesn't have to be perfect. You guys are just learning and figuring things out. So just see where things go. There you go, I closed it up. Now if I go back to my brush tool, I'm gonna hit B to go back to my brush, hold my Alt key down. I'm gonna load some of like this gray white color here and blah, 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 click, 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 click. Maybe I wanna shade it a little bit. Alt click key again, I'll pick up some of that lighter gray, make it a wee bit smaller. And I'll do that same trick again for the lower part of his mouth. If I don't um, deselect and I start just clicking again, it'll just make a new selection too. That's the other way of doing that. I'm just clicking like I would, imagine like having a pair of scissors and like the part where you cut down on the scissors, that's like the click. Yeah, so doing the same thing over here, just doing a nice little rough click around the mouth. And I'm gonna hold, go back to my brush, B for brush. Alt key to load the color and voila, paste, 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 paste. Beak, alt key to get the darker color. Maybe my brush needs to be well smaller for that. Once again, use that closed or closed bracket tool to make that smaller. And I'm just going around what I need to go around. And maybe even darker. So alt click and I'm gonna load an even darker color just to give it a little bit more definition. And Command minus to zoom out, Command D to deselect. And just by doing that, you can see how that character feels like they exist and they've got a little bit more depth and everything. And that makes it a little bit more interesting. Um, 
I can do a little bit more to this side here once again using that uh, clipping tool I'm just gonna go around the shape really quick my bird it doesn't have to be very precise if I know like a rough area like I just want this little corner here uh, I can just do that B to go back to my brush tool uh, I've got like a darkish color uh, go back to 10% and maybe I'll just want to shade it a little bit more on the side there. Like, oh, I'd like that a bit darker, a bit bigger. And Command D, D select. Yeah, so that's how you do that. Now, if I want to blend an area, like you can see sort of like Command plus to zoom in. A little hand tool by holding down the space bar to move up. So there's like a rough line there. I could just, you know, like paint that. Um, but the other thing too is I could also smudge. So the smudge tool, if you hover over that, you see what it does. It smudges. So if I was to drag the smudge tool over this area, it smudges it. Now, if I like the texture, I'm not going to do this. But if you want it to feel smoother, you could smudge tool the heck out of it. And that's going to feel more um, smudged. You can also use the blur tool. Um, but the direction in which you smudge is your smudge. And just by doing that, it's like, it's like rubbing your fingers over your charcoal paint drawings. Um, it does that. I'm not the biggest fan of this look, but just to show you, you could do that as well. I like the rougher look. So I'm just going to Command Z and undo. Also to your history is here if you click this little button here and you can go back to where you started using this tool boom and go back to your brush like it never happened yeah because uh, i like the texture if you don't like the texture that's up to you like i find this one's more interesting for my aesthetic than soft fuzzy bird there so think about what works for you and what works for your technique uh, don't spend too long on a frame because you've got lots of frames to do, but give it enough sort of shading and dimension to make it feel interesting. You might want to go and add maybe an, an additional lines layer to, to add additional e uh, interest or, or um, line work. Uh, I used kind of a, just like the line work that had the same thickness throughout. There are pens and stuff that will have like a varying weight thickness, but have a look at your pens there and when you are drawing look at things like smoothing because that is how we all cheat to make our drawing drawings look smoother um it's not cheating it's just working with letting the computer do the hard bit for you so keep that in mind those those tools up there um i'm in the eraser tool but you can see up here smoothing opacity your blend mode particularly if you're shading and uh you can try and use the uh symmetry tool but I've never had that work for me. And honestly, things aren't very symmetrical in the world we live in, but it's there if you want to make a butterfly. I don't know. Anyways, I hope you guys have found this helpful. Don't forget, when you're done, you're going to save this. And you're going to save it as a Photoshop file, so save it on my computer. And also save it as a JPEG, yeah? But always save your Photoshop files. So I'd call this whatever your first frame is. So uh, panel story board frame also add some frame padding eventually you will need to do lots more frames than that so if i do say that story forward frame 001 and i throw that onto my desktop and click save and press ok that will save it onto my computer desktop um, and I will, with uh, Premiere, you can always save Photoshop files and take them into Premiere so you don't have to save them as JPEGs, but you would want to save them as JPEGs if you're like uploading that to like Slack or Flickr or anything like that. So um, make sure you do save that as a JPEG as well by going File, Save As, and Save on your computer and then switch that to a JPEG, but always click save and copy, and then you can do JPEG, but always make sure you've got that Photoshop file with all of those lovely layers in case you need to make a change, yeah? And that's basically how to um, shade uh, and work on your file for your storyboard panels inside of Photoshop. Uh, have a good evening, and I hope this helped.